welcome to Conservation Conversations with me, Sarah Mohan. Today we'll be speaking with Dr. Ulas Karant of the Wildlife Conservation Society and we'll be discussing whether wildlife tourism can benefit conservation in India. Dr. Karant, how should we view wildlife tourism in India as a necessary evil? I think we should view wildlife tourism in India primarily as a tool to educate our public about the value of nature and wildlife. So it has a function. So I would not call it an evil. We need it. We need it done the right way. Wildlife tourism in India has come to mean chaotic and competitive and there's hardly any communing with nature that's happening. So how can we really change that? I think we have to change it by the way we educate the tourists. I think this excessive focus on charismatic animals, it's as though Rantambore or Kana or any of these beautiful parks don't have value other than the tiger. And, you know, getting up front and close with the tiger, hundreds of tourists surrounding the tiger. This kind of focus comes from the tour guides, from the managers, from the media. Uh, that needs to change. People have to be told that uh, it's wonderful to be in a park, even if you don't see a tiger. I go to Nagarhole five or six times, once I may see a tiger. It doesn't matter, every visit is valuable. I think this focus on big animals have gotten too much in Indian promotion of Indian tourism. And what about the positive impacts of wildlife tourism, if any? There's tremendous amount of uh, positive impact. People like me first saw wildlife by going to wildlife reserves. The educational value of parks is incredible, but one has to create an ambience where people go there to absorb nature, not create this frenzy about seeing the tiger, the so-called tiger tourism, where people feel it's a total failure if they don't see the tiger. We need to get rid of all these um, side effects of uh, misfocused tourism, then it's really valuable. The second problem is, outside of some of our high value wildlife reserves like Corbett, and Rantambur, you are getting them surrounded by resorts and these are beginning to choke the parks. So some sort of a regulation on land use as to how much space should a resort have around it that's unbuilt so there is room for animal movement etc. needs to be brought in. So there's a whole set of things we need to do. Now many people cite the African model of high value, low volume tourism to be ideal. But in a democratic country like India, is it possible to restrict tourism to just the wealthy? I don't think it's possible and I don't think it's desirable. Africa is a very different situation. Uh, many of these countries are poor, they don't have industry, they don't have prosperous agriculture. So tourism is the mainstay of their economies and the local people are too poor to afford to go to these protected areas. It's, you see some of these fine parks, but you hardly see any Africans in them. So I don't think that's a model we should be looking at, although it may be appropriate for some African countries. What we should be looking at is that our national parks and publicly owned lands should have tourism that is accessible to Indian citizens, which are well managed, tightly controlled, but people can still afford to go and see wildlife. I think that's the critical thing. On the other hand, high value tourism that brings in money and resources should create more habitat for wildlife, not on publicly owned lands, but on privately owned lands which are outside of protected areas. In some sense, if you look at Africa, Kruger is publicly owned and visited by a fair number of people, including some Africans. But outside of it are private reserves, which cater only to the very affluent. But that brings in uh, revenue, that generates employment, and it has changed the land use from ranching and farming and other things that were hostile to wildlife, to one that actually supports wildlife. So the power of High value tourism should be targeted at lands outside the protected areas, private lands, with the protected areas being managed primarily for public good and public education. 
One also keeps hearing about how a large portion of tourism revenues should be pumped back into local communities because they're the ones that bear the brunt of living next to protected areas. And they also, their lives are also adversely affected by tourism activities sometimes. But in reality, usually very few people from the local community are employed in tourism in menial jobs like drivers or guides and such. So the trickle down effect in India is actually very little, right? It is very little because the way the industry is structured now, the ownership of these high value tourism chains rests with someone else who is far away. He's not a part of the local community. So bulk of the profits, bulk of the revenue goes away. It does create some employment. It's not that it's uh, a trivial. The amount of employment created is quite substantial. On the other hand, if the ownership of the enterprise vested more locally, probably a greater proportion of the revenues would uh, percolate down to the local community rather than be siphoned away. The more important thing for me is that the people who suffer uh, because a park was created or suffer its consequences, negative consequences, they should benefit and I think the best way to do that is that the land outside and the people who suffer mostly are farmers or farm dependent people. If this land can support wildlife and the power of money coming in goes into supporting wildlife rather than agricultural crops on these lands, I think that will create much more goodwill and much more income in the local community. If we were then to draw out uh, wildlife species from protected areas, wouldn't that just cause more problems, create conflict? I think if you create large enough landscapes, it can't be done by drawing a tiger to a five acre farm. But if you create a 10 or 15 square kilometer block of forest where the farmers are a cooperative and they're managing their lands for high value tourism, um, elephant rides, whatever, and they make more money from that than from farming, I think it's perfectly fine because it's their land and the wildlife is managed by them. How can we extricate ourselves out of this mess sort of that we've created and uh, have a more rational, equitable wildlife tourism model in India? Certainly the tourism industry as a whole, big and small, needs to reform itself. And the park managers and the park management should, I, I think, also visualize the value of properly run tourism rather than just keep it out or try to take over everything themselves. I think there's got to be a balance which can come from a dialogue.